The re-election of Ursula von der Leyen, a symbol of the EU's downfall? As we step into another five-year term of Ursula von der Leyen as the European Commission president, one cannot help but reflect on the growing disconnect between the will of the European people and the decisions being made at the highest levels of the European Union. The reappointment of von der Leyen, far from being a victory for European unity, risks becoming the very symbol of the EU's downfall. A leader for the elites, not the people. Von der Leyen's tenure has been marked by a deepening chasm between EU bureaucrats and the citizens they claim to serve. While she might enjoy the backing of political elites, there's a pervasive sentiment across member states that the interests of ordinary Europeans have been sidelined. From unchecked migration to mishandled crises such as the COVID-19 vaccine rollout, von der Leyen has, for many, epitomized the dysfunctionality of the EU's leadership. What's perhaps most disturbing is that her re-election feels less like a choice made by the people, and more like a top-down imposition. The bureaucratic machinery of Brussels churns on, seemingly impervious to the growing frustrations on the streets of Rome, Paris, Warsaw, or Athens. These frustrations are not just about von der Leyen's leadership but about the entire direction the EU is taking. The voice of the people. Ignored. What we witnessed during this re-election process is a clear indication that the voices of millions across the continent were effectively drowned out by backroom deals and political maneuvering. There was no grand debate, no consideration of the concerns that are gripping Europe, just a cold, calculated choice made far from the public's reach. In many countries, citizens feel that the EU has become a project of elites. Institutions designed to protect European unity now serve as echo chambers, insulated from the real economic and social crises that define daily life for many. National sovereignty is slowly being eroded in the name of progress, while decisions that affect everyone are made by a few. A crisis of identity. This election underscores a growing identity crisis within the EU. What does it mean to be European in 2024? Is it about being a part of a grand political project, or is it about preserving the unique cultural identities and sovereignty of individual nations? Von der Leyen, through her actions and policies, seems to suggest that the latter must be sacrificed for the former. But this forced unity could ultimately tear the Union apart. Rather than fostering a European identity that respects the diversity of its member states, von der Leyen's leadership seems to push for a one-size-fits-all approach that ignores the distinct histories, cultures, and needs of different nations. Countries that question this approach are often dismissed or branded as Eurosceptics, when in reality, they are simply advocating for a Europe that respects its own diversity. The next five years, a slow collapse. As von der Leyen embarks on another term, the question remains, can the EU survive another five years of leadership that is out of touch with the very people it's supposed to serve? The reality is that Europe's future looks grim if the current trajectory continues. Economic instability, social unrest, and a rising tide of nationalism are brewing beneath the surface. Europe's citizens are tired of being told what's best for them by unelected bureaucrats. They are tired of policies that benefit the few at the expense of the many. And they are tired of an EU that no longer feels like it belongs to them. If von der Leyen and the European Commission continue to ignore the warning signs, the EU as we know it may not survive. What will collapse first? The trust of the people in the institutions that govern them. Or the institutions themselves, as nationalism, disillusionment, and apathy spread across the continent like wildfire? A call to listen. In the next five years, Europe will face unprecedented challenges. The EU must decide whether it will continue down its current path or whether it will finally begin to listen to its people. Von der Leyen's re-election may be a victory for the political class, but it could very well mark the beginning of the end for the European Union as we know it. Only time will tell whether this decision will usher in a period of reform and renewal, or whether we are witnessing the slow, miserable collapse of a once-hopeful project.